we can do with the metadata. Okay, okay so we were here, right? Last time? Everybody is yeah. in sync? Now, um, if you look at this, tell me what um, is, what metadata, so, so think about, you see all this here? Oops, here, it's this, this, column here. These are all metadata, right? So let us go through them and tell, let us discuss which of these are, you know, syntactic metadata, structural metadata, or semantic metadata. And also let us ask question, why, um, uh, How did we? Uh, how do we automatically? If it is not automatically, how do we automatically ex get that metadata? Right? So uh, we start with uh, this thing on the top. Um, now, just to explain you what is happening here. If this thing has a video, then you will see that this would be. So if there, there is a video embedded on this page, okay, then. Uh, the extractor would look at the video file and extract the metadata. You remember uh, earlier I, there was a table where I showed you that um, there are you know, different metadata for different media. In this case, media happens to be video. So there will be certain metadata for the video on this page. This page clearly has a number of text elements, right? There is also a figure, and there is apparently a video embedded somewhere. I don't see it here, but here it shows. So, see what is happening here. This is a URL of that video. That's a type of metadata, right? What kind of metadata it is? It is basically a file name. Is file name a structural metadata? Sorry, syntax. Yeah, it's just you know some name. But there's no, you know, in fact, there's not much of a structure in the file name per se as it is. So that is um, now. Look at this other thing. That this is a bit rate. Format is real video format. Width of this email, you know, video. It's 30, 320 by 200. So Q, Q6 kind of what is called. Okay. And then this, he says whether the video invalid, meaning that um, sometimes when web page changes and that video is gone, then it will be saying that that video is there sometime in the past, but it's no longer there. So in this case, the video is still there, so it's zero. Now, what kind of metadata would we call this? There is one more classification, I don't know to what level I discussed in the last class, is content uh, descriptive, uh, sorry, content independent, content descriptive and content dependent metadata. Have we, have we studied this? Is that something you understand? Content independent, content descriptive and content dependent. Content is whatever, you know, content is in this case video. Or in this other case here, content is this stuff you see in the text and other stuff you see on the page for which we have metadata. So the content independent metadata is one that exists regardless of what is content about and what is in the content. So file name can be arbitrary. So it is content independent. 
content descriptive is one that describes, perhaps summarizes the content. But it can be based on somebody's perception of the content, somebody's view of the content. For example, if there is a an image, and suppose I say this is a nice photograph. Suppose there's a photograph, and I say it's a nice photograph. By and large, there is no such software or thing where you will automatically go through the image and say it is a nice photograph. Right? But that's the metadata. Clearly it's a metadata. You give, let's say that you know there's a movie review and you are now rating the movie review. When you, you rate me, it is your view. You give three star or four star or two star, that's your view. You are describing your view of what that metadata is, right? So that is content descriptive. And if you actually have a metadata that is actually depend upon what is in the content, you have analyzed the content and it is, it can be consistently you know, uh, if you can come to the, you know, through a cost, either you were looking at it or through a software program, you can consistently pick out what uh, it says. Then it will be content dependent. For example, I have a software that tells you that this article is negative, is a negative article on. Um, uh, on, on this content. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, this is an article about somebody so and so and it is a negative article about him. Right? The article says something negative about this person or event or whatever. If you are describing it purely based on intellectual process, I would call you describing it. It's descriptive. But if I use a software and it says it comes up with this and they use these negative words and all that. Then I looked into the content, I analyzed the content, so now that metadata is content dependent metadata. Fundamentally though it is about how do you get to that metadata? How do you say something? Data, metadata is data about data. How do you say something? How do you come up with that? Do you come it, it you you are that metadata has nothing to do with what is in the content or how you describe that content, then it is content independent. If that metadata is kind of described, but it is described often independent of what exactly is in there, occurrence of specific word, occurrence of particular big patterns, occurrence of particular color in the image, then it is content descriptive metadata, nice flower, good review is done is by by human and then he says here belgrade yugoslavia europe belgrade is mentioned here explicitly <laughs> so this is a metadata and it is content dependent because in, in remember in this particular case there is a piece of software does text analysis, does you know lexical analysis, tokenization, or have parsing of the text, looks for proper noun, looks for names for locations, and then says there is Belgrade there. So it is content dependent. It looks into the content, says what it is. Any question? Very clear. But this is not trivial, right? There is a little bit of, as I said in the last class also, depends on how I, um, if I am doing automatic sentiment or analysis or intention analysis, that's content dependent. If I am intellectually doing it, that's content descriptive. So there is your assumption. So if I may ask the question, tell me, uh, give me 
three examples of content dependent metadata. You have to imagine what you will get contained and you will tell that in the class, in, in the exam. If I say content descriptive, you say, well, this I describe. Uh, you know, I look, you know, this is my view and this is how I describe it. And that's why it is dependent descriptive. So, now let us look at this thing. Costa Rica pushes for war try, cry. You see here? What kind of law? This is title. This title. Let's talk about it. Is this syntactic, structural, or semantic? Structural. Right? Any question? Structural. It's very clear. It's at a particular location always. You kind of have to say where in the document this text appeared. So it's structural. Is it content independent, content descriptive, or content dependent? Dependent? It is dependent, that's true. Because it's there. You are going to put a title only if it is there. There is no description here. You are not changing it. You are saying it what is in the content. Right? Surrogate is an image by which it shows. Now what, it, what, what, what kind of metadata it is? Is it content? Um, uh, uh, independent or content uh, dependent or content descriptive? It is independent. It is independent, yes. Just a file name, essentially. And it is also syntactic. To get to the image was a structural element. Now, this is very really interesting. You have to Look at the data, you know, that particular data that comes in and, and say there is an image. That <coughs> image can be anywhere in this case of the picture. So it is not descriptive. It is not in. But the fact that um, there is a name of the image, a file name, is all that you are putting here. It is content independent. Media tab is video. So this is content independent and syntactic URL that's easy right description now here is an interesting one look at the text there That text exactly does not appear here. Hmm? So it's a semantic matter. It conveys a meaning. It's not syntactic. It's not picked up as a text without any interpretation. For it to be syntactic, it will have to be without interpretation. It has to be tied to a very specific part of the page, then it will be structured. Uh, yes. Could it be from a meta tag in the page though? It, it or do you be, think that's... No, it, it's a very good point. And it could be, and if that is the case, then it would not be, you know, then it would be different, then you categorize it differently. Good point. If it is a meta tag already, there's a description in the thing, which is not shown on the page, but there's a tag there. Then, or, then because a tag uniquely says something, where it is, um, it, tag implies a structure of the document. So you can argue, you can call it a syntactic or structural, and then you are simply copying it. So in that case, I would call it content descriptive because this happens to describe the content that is in here. Clip length. So there is nothing semantic about it, there is a structure about it, it is syntactic and it is content it depends now, here think about it, if it is um, already given to you then and you are not, you're not actually playing it, then it is not dependent. Yeah. But if you are actually playing it and saying what, how long it is and measuring it,
Now there's a lot more um, that uh, you know that we need to. to that, that is that, 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 there's a very interesting thing here about uh, you know when you look at the metadata. Look at the people. So it is this Slobodan Milosevic, for example. What is very interesting is to understand, and here all you do, you see, is a people, right? It's a semantic metadata. That is for sure. But it can be different level of semantics here, in that. All you know is it's a people, it's a person. But what if you also knew that that person is a office holder or an executive of some kind or politician of some kind in that country? So there is a role, there is a model. You know, in this case of geo uh, geopolitical or political systems. So model that more country, country has a president, country has this role, country has that role. Right. In that case, this would be content. Uh, you know, this would be even more semantic. Anyway, my, if Michael was, you would have learned something. Oh, you are that good. Um, so when you look at library and all the properties of library, think in these terms. You know, see the rich. You know, and see how you can make it rich, richer in the point of you know, for users. Right? That I um, have a model that in the location consists of a locality as such, or name of a location, which is part of something, in this case, country, which is part of a continent. Right? There is a good bit of structure of that knowledge. Right? It's not just a string. It's not a string. Belgrade, Yugoslavia, Europe. It, the system, if system knows that first thing is a name of a town or local locality or city or whatever, that the second thing is the name of a country or you know uh, a politically uh, you know relevant term, ge ge geographically relevant term, um, you know that is larger in, uh, you know broader in nature than say that first one, and the last one let's say is the broadest in scope, okay, say Europe. That. So what happens there is that there is a model that somebody has created. In certain particular context, you may call that model an ontology. Ontology is at, at this level an agreement between all its users that oh okay for the location I will at the minimum tell you the uh, you know um, uh, name uh, of the country and, uh, and and the continent. But you may also say if that Town or city is in United States. I would also require to have state. You know, when you fill out some forms, and if your address is also in United States, it will not ask you for a state. But if it is your address in the United States, it will ask you a state. So there is that model inside in that, okay. and that maybe all the richness. Though, so what is that? That is semantic richness. It's not a string. It has this component that has meaning, and oh, you, you know, human understands, and then we agree. Ah, that's the name of a country. Now, for example, now you can argue Yugoslavia. There's no longer Yugoslavia. See, if it was just a string, Yugoslavia, then that's all it is. Is it Yugoslavia or not? I can match it. But if it is a country, I would have possibly concept of history. Does this country exist anymore? Has it some, some change? Has there been political? You can talk about all these meaningful things, right? That is, that is what the power of all this semantic computation is. That is the richness of metadata. So now you should ask questions when I do Lucene. What does it allow me? And how far I am from listening to what others are doing now. The new new search engine have started to introduce all these things. And there are many ways to do that. So there is a very simplistic way to do that. But they, what another important concept I want to introduce is levels of abstractions. Abstractions. That at some level, this is a string. 
then at some other level, it is a metadata. Then at some other level, there is a link between that metadata, which is a string, with a concept called country, which is a lot more meaningful. Because, think about it, then once I have concept of country, I could have link between that to country's president or prime minister or country has a political structure, parliamentary, democratic, country has a population, so many other things can happen. Because of population, size I know, is a big country, small country, geographically big, geographically small, population big, population small, what is small, what is big, so all these things that come in, has semantic thing. What if my search engine was, was so smart that you search for Yugoslavia and it, it, the search engine knows that Yugoslavia no longer exists. That means you are interested in some historical thing. That means the other things that it shows you, uh, it did not show you results um, necessarily or, or of things after Yugoslavia ceased to exist. Or at least it knows that there is certain value of uh, results after Yugoslavia ceased to exist and certain other value before Yugoslavia ceased to exist. What if it knew that? Think about it. A little thing that is, you as a human look at this word Yugoslavia, and a lot of things may happen in your mind. You may immediately say, ah, that, you know, there's this war, Balkan war, it no longer exists. This must be now this particular city that is mentioned, Bel Belgrade. Oh, that's part of what is now Serbia. I might have other city that would say, oh no, that's not part of, that is part of some other, you know, Croatia, let's say, or Herzegovina or, or, or Bosnia or whatever, right? And all those associations you, you make in your mind might have occurred to you if you are aware of these things that, oh, yeah, Belgrade, well, it's still, uh, you know, city is still uh, it's the capital of uh, Serbia. What if, now, if Belgrade was simply a text, then your machine, computer can't do anything about it other than it's a text. And whether some other text is exactly the same or not, whether your keyword is Belgrade or not, that is all that can do. But of, what if there was this model and the model had Belgrade as a city that is part of a country, that indeed country uh, had a uh, you know, has properties such as the year country came into existence, the year is it, you know, uh, you know, it presents still the you know, same country or the year it disappeared or, you know, became something else. Think about the 13 countries came out of USSR. Right? If that knowledge to human immediately, that's, I mean, it's, for human it won't be string at all. Think about it. When you look at Baghdad, to you it is not string at all. In fact, it is inconceivable that you can even come up with a, uh, you down down your thinking process such that you can think of a string. It's, it's inconceivable. You're going to apply some knowledge. Each of us has different knowledge. What if I were to apply this knowledge? Now there are many ways to apply. Very exciting. Think about it. One way to apply. It is, this was uh, a way we applied in, uh, and I'll discuss maybe if I have time, uh, this company that I had started, uh, and in fact the pattern that we were, that we were given in uh, 2000, 2001, is that we created this domain model, or an ontology, uh, uh, whereby we had, um, uh, you know, we had model, in, the, in our model we had the city and country and continent, all this were there. That is one way of doing it. And we had, Gone to CIA fact books. I, most, I hope you know. CIA fact book is a exhaustive source of um, or significant source of uh, uh, geographical knowledge. I don't know what form it is now. You want to look at it. Let's see if we, I can find it. Yeah. So this one is a fact book of the world, and it has all kind of information. Here, uh, there is information about 
every country and within that country it would have exhaustive information see it tells me what is the flag it tells me this thing see it has all these properties within that I can have it says that it's economy I say they will tell you variety of things see excuse me see all these metadata what we did was to write an extractor of this website to create our geographical or geopolitical knowledge. So we had a knowledge base or an ontology which had name of all the countries, in this case, that case Yugoslavia, and we had even information. Yugoslavia is in Europe, we had information about adjoining country to Yugoslavia, which is given here. So what we did, we mined this source and put it into a computer program in a way and my computer program now then extracts from this web page from this web page where I extract the string Yugoslavia my computer program was smart enough to actually have a lot more information about Yugoslavia inside it could use it if I know how to use it and I created this knowledge by mining existing source of knowledge a human could have put it in we got it from a very good source. Somebody is maintaining it, right? There are some people employed to keep it up to date all the time. And I simply tapped into that. Since those days, a new date has appeared now. A new way has appeared. So for example, the new way it has appeared is so there's a conserved country and from this somehow if I crawl it appropriately I'll get access to all the countries see here there's a list of countries you see and from here I'm going to get list of all countries and by the way there are multiple list of countries different ways and then You know, it says how this was created, and then I, I'll actually get you the you know the somewhere that you know not used but now may not be listed here, or it may be listed. We have to see how it is listed. But this is another way I call. CIA Factbook is created by some people who are hired by our government. Wikipedia is created by a bunch of volunteers. Either way, I have access to knowledge, and I have programs ability to extract the knowledge put in my system and use it leverage it to do smart computation intelligent computation so i'll show you what some simpler example of that as we go along here any question about this so hopefully we will answer the questions here is what you should be able to do You should be